let's do some uh, some quick topography. So there's, uh, as probably most of you know, there's a whole vignette on topography, uh, and uh, that vignette uh, has essentially two things it's going to ask you to do. It's possible they might ask you to do three things, um, but usually it's just two. And the two that typically it will say is it'll say something like, all right, we're, here we have a, a topographic plan and you, we want you to make a flat area to be able to put a structure on. Well, first thing to say is there is no such thing as flat when you're talking about outside uh, unless it's a concrete slab. Um, everything else is sloping to some degree. So when they say flat uh, or flattish or a pad, what they're referring to is something that's very low slope that's going to make it easy to then build on. Uh, so first thing I would want to know is where is high and where is low. So I would have to look at the numbers. When you look at something like this, you actually don't know which way is up and which way is down until you start seeing the numbers. So let's assume that, uh, um, that up to the top is up for now. Let's say that's uh, uh, 95 and this is 94. 4 and 93, etc. So first thing you notice is that what I've done here is immediately is I've uh, called it out as a one foot interval. Um, one foot is very typical, especially on this, uh, on the various vignettes. Um, but it's possible that it could be a two foot interval. If you're talking about maps and other sort of complicated things, it could be a five foot or 10 foot or 20 foot interval. If you're talking about something very, very small, uh, it could be a one millimeter interval. Uh, the concept still works uh, no matter what you're doing. But so the interval, that's definitely part of what's going on. You want to make sure you understand what the interval is and you, that it's continuous in which direction everything is going. Uh, clearly, the, when I have the contour lines closer together, that's a steeper slope. When I have them farther apart from each other, that's a less steep slope. Uh, one of the ways that they're going to talk about slope is by using a term, uh, a percentage term. So if something says that there's a 20% slope maximum, then if it said, say, 20% slope maximum, then you have to think about that as 20 feet vertical compared to 100 feet horizontal. So 20 feet vertical compared to 100 feet horizontal. Obviously, it's the same as 2 to 10 or 1 to 5, right? But by using the percentage, it's a way of talking about slope my least favorite way of talking about slope, but that's another story. So the two things that they're gonna ask you to do, is gonna place a, a pad, which again is not a concrete pad. When they use the term pad in this context, it's gonna be just a sort of flattish area that somebody could build on in the future. Uh, so where would I do it? Well, I could do it where it's very steep, but that seems silly. I'm probably gonna try to choose an area that's already uh, relatively flat. And then the second thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to stop uh, the water from just draining down, sheet draining down uh, this, uh, this hill uh, into my structure, whatever that structure is. Uh, so I'm going to have to deal with that in some way. And I'm almost always going to do that with a swale. A uh, swale is essentially a ditch. A berm is essentially a mound. Uh, so. In order to sort of do this simply, I'm actually going to break them apart. So I'm going to do uh, the first one, I'm going to say, let's make the flat area. So, all right, well, one possibility is that uh, I do something like I take this contour and maybe I cut it back. So I have a bunch of soil here that I've just removed by doing that. Uh, and, you know, maybe I take that soil and I add it out over there. So I've taken the cut and I've put it in and used it as my fill. Cut and fill, balancing that, something that absolutely will show up on the multiple choice, absolutely will not show up in terms of a, an idea on the vignette. Uh, you're, you're still going to do cutting and filling, but nobody cares about whether any of it balances, so just make it easy on yourself. So what I've effectively done is I've made this great big area here that is now reasonably flat. It's still sloping, it's still a one foot slope all the way across, but it's now a much bigger dimension, so it's comparatively flat. So that's sort of a nice, simple, big zone. So I can imagine that I could put a structure there relatively easily. And all I had to do was make this contour line push back and push out 
this second one here. Okay, I'm gonna jump to the next screen and just do the same thing again, but start talking about the uh, swales so we can see how that might work as well. All right, so there's our little structure. I'm gonna come back and remove those, uh, those two things. But let's talk about how we might put a swale in. So what I wanna stop is that water from just sheet draining right down the process here, down that hill. So I'm gonna do something like put a ditch that does something like that. Now, I'm drawing it very swoopy. And the reason I'm drawing it very swoopy is because that's generally how you do it out in the world. Uh, and you do that because you're not usually in straight lines because people want things to sort of look natural and fit into a landscape. On the vignette, and we'll look at a quick example of it, on the vignette, uh, it'll be very uh, pointy and straight lines. That's just because of the nature of the program, not the nature of making a swale. So I have these swoopy lines. What I've done is I'm digging out, I'm cutting into this uh, ground plane in order to have a place for the water to go. And maybe I might do it also on the other side. So I'm digging across and maybe I've got a little bit there. So any of that water is gonna come down and find this path, this faster path around my structure. So now I'm gonna start combining these two together. And then I can just kind of let it stop down here. So any of this water is gonna to try to come sheet drain down here. It's gonna get picked up in the swale and go right around my structure. And I've gotten rid of this, these two portions right here. And I've gotten rid of these a little bit. So I'm cutting in, I'm cutting in, and then cutting way in back here, and then adding out a bit along there. That's all it's really gonna expect you to be able to do. Uh, the other possibilities, you might have to mess with something for say, uh, a walkway or something like that. And we start doing a walkway, uh, you just want to make sure that you don't have a situation where the uh, contour lines are going straight across that walkway. Because if they do, that water is going to drain straight down and it's going to become um, a runway for the water exactly where you don't want that to happen. So what you would need to do is make sure that the water has some ability to get off. So maybe it does something like that, right, where it'll drain uh, away from, it's got a cross drain, or maybe it's crowned in such a way like a road does, so that it's gonna push the water out to either side. So that's possibly they might get you into something like that, but these other two, the swale and the, the making the pad, that's absolutely something that's gonna be done. Uh, so, okay, I think that hopefully makes some sense. Let's uh, take a one last look. This is the example from the vignette. Uh, and you can see what I mean by these pointy lines. And these are pointy, this is where somebody has made a swale. Uh, and the reason it looks so pointy is because it has these little buttons on it. And that button probably was right about there and it got dragged to there. And therefore, that swale is now doing that. Right? And this swale is doing that. Right? Pretty simple idea, but confuses people all the time. Uh, you want to just practice it a little bit and get used to it, but once you do it a few times, it's pretty straightforward. We have lots of other information on Black Spectacles and, and uh, some of the other um, uh, webinars, so you can find uh, more information about it, but it's definitely something you want to practice a bit. Uh, once you've done it a few times, it's uh, old hat, uh, but the first couple times you do it, it feels a little alien. You've got to make sure you're not accidentally making mounds instead of cutting in, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm.